Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on further moles calculations. So in the last tutorial, I introduced the mole and I talked about it in relation to Avogadro's constant. So we now know how to perform uh, basic mass calculations using Avogadro's constant mass of a substance, the relative molecular mass, uh, and the amount of substance in moles as well. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at more moles calculations. We're gonna look at calculated concentration of a solution, gas volumes, and water crystallization. Looking at the concentration of a solution. So it's the number of moles of a, whatever it is that's dissolved, in one decimeter cubed of a solution. So one decimeter cubed, we've not really used that before. We might have at GCSE, but prior to this, and what we understand a bit better is that's one litre. OK, but we just refer to it as one decimeter cubed. So one mole or a mole per decimeter cubed is the concentration. Yeah, so how many moles are there of that substance per litre? That's what that means. And it can be signified as a mole per decimeter cubed like that. Or some people might use a slash. If you use a dash, it means that you have it to the power of three, not to minus three when you put that dash in, because that effectively shows it as a fraction. So you can use either one of these, but what isn't acceptable is something like a uh, mole dash decimeter to the minus three, that's not acceptable, um, or uh, just moles decimeter cubed like that to three, that's also not acceptable. So it has to be one of these two configurations when you write it out. So the number of moles per unit volume, that's what concentration means. There's, of course, a triangle formula for this. So the number of moles is equal to concentration times volume. Remember, I used N for the number of moles before as a shortcut. So N equals CV is quite an easy one to remember. So N equals C times V. Of course, that's what that means. Um, and that is what this is showing as well. So you can see here that concentration is therefore equal to moles over volume. So these are just rearrangements of these. For me, easiest to remember is N equals CV in my head. Moles equals concentration times volume. Now, the units are really, really important. So moles, N in moles, is equal to concentration, and that is in moles per decimeter cubed, times volume and volume has to be in decimeter cubed so we need to convert sometimes so like i said you need to be careful of the units of your volume so if it's in centimeter cubed in the question you're going to have to convert it to decimeter cubed to do that you're going to divide by a thousand okay so centimeter cubed to decimeter cubed is you divide by 1,000 because one centimetre cubed is equal to 0 0.001 decimetre cubed. Here is a question to have a go at, so pause the video and give it a go yourself. First of all, I need to calculate the MR, so the relative molecular mass of my compound. So my MR is going to be 40. For my, for my calcium, and I've got a carbonate. So 40 plus 12, that's from the carbon, and I've got three oxygen, so three times 16. So that is 100, that's a nice whole number. And then we're gonna calculate the quantities required. So the volume of the solution, and what is that a solution of? So calcium carbonate, so V, and in brackets, CaCO3. That means the volume of the calcium carbonate solution is 25 centimetres cubed. So I'm using shorthand, but I'm telling the examiner exactly what I'm doing. So if I try, if I want to convert that, or I don't want to, I need to. So that is the same as, if I divide that by 1,000, that tells me that I've got 0 0.025 decimeters cubed. And I need to have that in decimeter cubed to do my calculation. Therefore, the moles of my calcium carbonate, that's what N brackets, that means moles, is going to be my 1.5, because of course my calculation is N equals CV. Okay, so what I need to find out is my moles, so it equals concentration, and that's 1.5, because it told me up here I've got 1.5 moles per decimeter cubed, times my volume, which I've converted nicely to decimeters cubed. So 1.5 times 0 0.025, and that is 0 0.0375 moles. Great. Now, I learned in the previous tutorial how I can use my moles to work out, and my MR to work out my mass. 
So I know that moles equals mass over MR. So that's a different calculation. Therefore, mass is equal to moles times MR. I've just rearranged that. Therefore, the mass of my calcium carbonate is going to be equal to my moles that I've just calculated, 0375, times the MR of calcium carbonate, which is 100. I worked that out earlier. 3.75 grams. And that is my answer. Considering gas volumes now, so Avogadro's law, equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure contain an equal number of moles. So 10 decimeter cubed of nitrogen contains the same number of moles of nitrogen as 10 decimeters cubed of oxygen. Okay, so yeah, for example, 10 decimeters cubed of oxygen at room temperature and pressure contains the exact same number of moles as there is in 10 decimeters cubed of carbon dioxide or any other gas at that exact temperature and pressure too. So molar gas volume is the volume of space in a decimeter cubed taken up by one mole of a gas at a certain temperature and pressure. So at room temperature and pressure, RTP, room temperature and pressure, one mole of gas occupies 24 decimeters cubed. So I can write that as 24 decimeters cubed per mole. So one mole occupies 24 decimeters cubed. At standard temperature and pressure, STP, it's 22.4 decimeters cubed per mole. So what do I mean by RTP, room temperature and pressure, and STP? Room temperature and pressure is 101.3, which you don't always need to have it to that much detail. Check your spec. Kilopascals, which is the same as one atmosphere, and 20 degrees Celsius. And you'll need to learn that because often we talk about room temperature being around 21, 22 degrees Celsius, but it's 20. And standard temperature and pressure is the same pressure. So 101.3 kilopascals or one atmosphere, and it's zero degrees Celsius. And you need to learn these. So we've got a lovely um, triangle formula again. So the number of moles is the volume times the molar gas volume. So at room temperature and pressure, it'd be 24. At standard temperature and pressure, it would be 22.4. The gas volumes in this case, they need to be in decimeters cubed. So when we talk about our moles, it's obviously in moles. The volume is in decimeters cubed divided by molar gas volume. And that is in decimeters cubed per mole. And remember, those are our two different values that we can have depending on whether it's RTP or STP. So we can collect and measure the volume of gas evolved from an equation using a gas syringe via water displacement. And that gives us the amount of gas produced by a chemical reaction. And then we can use the stoichiometric ratios to work out, therefore, how many moles, for example, of the reactant we had. So let's have a go at this. Here is a worked example. Pause the video and give it a go. First thing I'm going to do is to calculate the MR of my compound. Okay, so the mass of methane. So what's the MR of methane? 12 from the carbon plus 4 times 1. Because each of those hydrogens contributes 1. So it's going to be 16. And that's a number you'll get to know quite well. Um, what's my volume of methane? So the CH4, that tells the reader that's what I'm working out, um, is 120 centimetres cubed. Now that is equal to if we divide it by a thousand to convert it into decimeter cubed, that is equal to 0 0.12 decimeters cubed. So I've had to do that conversion. You get a mark for that in the exam. So the number of moles is N equals, and have we been given details? We are going to assume RTP. We've not been told otherwise. So I'm going to assume it's RTP. So remember the moles of gas equals V divided by 24. So therefore, the moles of CH4 is going to be the volume 0 0.12 divided by 24. And that is 0 0.005. So we've got 0 0.005 moles of methane in that sample. And finally, we can then use 
uh, moles equals mass over MR. So we're going to rearrange that to make mass of subjects. So mass equals moles times MR. Therefore, the mass of methane, M bracket CH4, is going to be the moles that we've just worked out, 0 0.005, times the MR that I worked out at the start. So times 16, and that is 0 0.08 grams. There we go. Finally, let's have a look at water crystallization. So a salt is a type of compound consisting of a lattice of positive and negative ions. So it's a giant ionic lattice that goes on and on and on. And when you're at GCSE, you just think sodium chloride. It's just sodium and chlorine together in a lattice. The reality is that salts have something called water of crystallization. So it can exist in pure crystals with no water but it can also exist with water molecules fitted and squished and incorporated into that lattice. In those gaps, you will get water molecules fitting. Um, so yeah, we've got water molecules incorporated into the ionic lattice. And there's an image here shown, it's easy to do with a 3D model. They can just fit into the spaces. And that is called the water of crystallization. Okay, so we can work out the ratio. We can work out for however many NaCLs we have, in a unit, how many water molecules do we have in that lattice? So we call it a hydrated salt when it has those water molecules present, as opposed to an anhydrous salt when it doesn't have them. So a hydrated salt has water molecules as part of its crystalline structure, and it has a set ratio of it. It's not just a random number. And an anhydrous salt has no water in its crystalline structure. And when you purchase salt, you always have to say whether you want the anhydrous or hydrated. Um, so in order to get the anhydrous salt from its hydrated format, we can evaporate the water. So we can put the hydrated salt in a crucible here. We can heat it up and the water will evaporate and leave. And we, we can gently heat it. And eventually we'll get, we will just be left with the anhydrous salt. So there'll be no water left in the structure. The salt will have two different formulae depending on whether it's anhydrous or hydrated. OK, so an anhydrous copper sulfate is what we've seen quite a lot. So CuSO4, that's its formula. So for every one copper ion we have, we have one polyatomic SO4 ion in that lattice. The hydrated copper sulfate is CuSO4 dot 5H2O. OK, so that means for every CuSO4 unit, we have five molecules of water. It's, it's a ratio. Five molecules of water in that structure. So five molecules of water bound per mole of copper sulfate. It sounds like quite a lot, actually. So that number there corresponds to the moles of water of crystallization bound per mole of copper sulfate. I won't be able to fit it in. So in each specific type of salt, so with copper sulfate, for example, one mole of salt will always bind with the same number of moles of water of crystallization. So it's not random. Copper, hydrated copper sulfate is going to be CuSO4.5 H2O. If we were looking at a different type of salt, um, then we'd have a, potentially we'll have a different number. And to find the formula of the hydrated salt, we can do molar calculations. Um, we need to compare its mass with water to its mass without water. And that gives us the amount of water that's lost, obviously. Um, and then we can work out what that X is. So here is a, an example of a question. So using what we know so far, have a go at this question by yourself. Don't worry if you're not sure, I'll go through the worked example. First of all, let's find out the MR of water. So the MR of H2O is, I won't patronise you, it's 18, isn't it? 16 from the oxygen and then two ones added to that from each hydrogen. Then we're going to find out the moles of the, or the mass, or the number of moles of the water lost. So we've been told that the hydrated magnesium was 3.21 grams and that when all the water had been evaporated, we were left with 1.567 grams. OK, so this is it with water. This is it without water. Therefore, the difference between those two values is the amount of water. So if we do 3.21 minus 1.567, we're going to get 1.643 grams. And that is the mass of water lost. OK, so you do um, 
anhydrous, the mass of the anhydrous subtracted from the hydrated. Therefore, we can convert that into a number of moles. We know that moles equals mass over MR, don't we? So the moles of water that we must have lost, that therefore must have been contained in the original structure, has to be the mass is uh, moles equals mass, so 1.643 that we've just worked out, divided by the MR of water, 18. And that is 0 0.09127 moles. Okay, so we've got the moles of water that must have been in the original structure. Then I'm going to find out the MR of MgSO4, my salts. I'm going to work out how many moles. I found out how many moles of water I've got. How many moles of salt do I have? So that's going to be 24.3 for the magnesium, plus 32.1 for the sulfur, plus 4 times 16 from each of the oxygens. That's 120.1 grams per mole. That's my MR. And, there, and then I can work out the number of moles of MgSO4. Where do I get the mass? It's the anhydrous, magnesium sulfate. So moles equals mass over MR. Therefore, the moles of MgSO4 is going to be the mass, which is 1.567 grams, divided by the MR, 120.1, and that is 0 0.01301 moles. So we've got our moles of the salt and we've got our moles of the water. So finally, it's a ratio. So whenever we work out a ratio, if I write this out, we have got 0 0.01301 of, of salt to 0 0.09127 of water. So that is salt to water. If you ever need to work out a ratio, divide by the smallest number. So which number is smaller? It is this number here. So we're going to divide both sides by 0 0.01301. So this number divided by itself is, of course, going to give us 1. 0 0.01301 divided by 0 0.01301 is 1. And 0 0.09127 divided by 0 0.01301 is 7.015. So I'll just make a note of that. We're going to divide it by itself, and we're going to divide that also. So you just divide by the smallest number. That's what we've done to get those two values below. So x can only be a whole number, of course, and you should be coming out with a number that's close to a whole number. So therefore, x must be 7 here. There's a bit of an experimental, a certain amount of experimental error, so it's understandable that we didn't come out with exactly 7. So my answer, x, is 7.